and welcome back to the movie pope podcast and today we have a great guest we've got julie emmons from the carolina film community here and we're going to be chatting about herself the organization and what they do as well as the film scene in north carolina but before we dive in remember to like comment subscribe and as always please share this video with your friends acquaintances even adversaries and foes we are looking to grow our audience and we're always looking to expand our reach um so let's go ahead and dive in julie how are you doing today i'm well thank you how are you guys doing uh can't complain it's just another another saturday did you, I, I, do you think it's kind of weird that the day after halloween it felt like the middle of january oh my gosh it was freezing yes that was crazy I mean, I, I mean, I, I look out, I look out my window um, on Wednesday, and my whole car is encased in ice. And in years past, I would have to spend 20 minutes scraping, you know, scraping the ice off and sitting in there, freezing my tail off, you know, while the heater blasted it off. And now that I work from home, I'm like, eh, it's, you know, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's but, whatever, exactly. But um, but now I, I don't know. The weather here is just schizophrenic because it can't make up its mind on whether it wants to be hot or cold. You know. That now it feels like summertime. <laughs> yeah, today was beautiful, but then yesterday when I was running, yesterday morning, it was 28. Oh, yes. Yes. So it, it's jumping all over the place. Yeah. But I, I did hear a prediction that, that there is going to be snow this year, which will be a, a nice relief. Well, you know, not, last year, I, and I might be wrong, but I don't believe we had even one actual snowfall. No, we did not. Not one bit. We had ice, though. A lot we of did. ice. But no snow. But I'm a summer girl, so I don't I don't cry too much about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, summer's a lot longer here in the Carolinas than any other season. <laughs> so, um, so, um, Julie, let's go ahead and dive in. Why don't you, um, why don't you tell ever tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you got into the field that you're in? Okay. Um. So, like you said, I'm I'm Julie Emmons. I'm with um the nonprofit Carolina Film Community. And I think that is probably what I'm I'm doing the most of right now. But what I do for a real job um, in the industry is I work in casting. So I will um, I'll cast, you know, for movies, commercials, you, um, television, sometimes here and there. Um, a lot of times on the bigger budget films, I'll do the extras casting. Um, and then on smaller, you know, independent or just small pro productions, commercials and stuff, I'll do, you know, all the casting that's involved with that. Um, and I got involved. Actually, I started wanting to be an actress and, you know, like a lot of us do. And I acted mm -hmm. a lot, you know, in, in theater and things like that. But then when I got into film, I really loved it. But I started, I don't even know like how to explain it, but there's just like sort of a distaste for it started coming on. And I'm not sure I'm not shy at all. And I deal with rejection totally fine. But I started getting like anxious every time I'd have to audition. And that kind of thing. And before my career ever even took off, I was like, this is not for me. Um, <laughs> and a good friend of mine is a casting director. Uh, I met her on a film and I was just asked her, you know, during a slow, slow time, I said, hey, do you want some help doing this extras casting thing? And she's like, absolutely. Please help me. And I ended up working on that film with her and I actually really loved it. I loved the process. I'm very organized, very type A personality. And so it really worked for me um, to do that. So that's what I do. That's what I get paid for. Um, I also do some producing for like small films, um, independent films, things that I've created and made myself. I've produced. Um, I used to have it. You know, well, I have a team of um, filmmakers and we all work together to make films. So I, I got my hand in a lot of different things, but mostly I do casting. Gotcha. So um, so so are, are you a member of SAG or? or uh, no, I'm not a member of SAG. We're, we're a right to work state. Um, so with our actors and stuff, you know, they, they don't, and I'm not, you know, I don't do acting. So SAG is an acting, um, union. So, um, I would never have joined that because that wouldn't have been very lucrative for me, <laughs> but no, I'm not a part of a, a union at all just because we are right to work and I'm independent. So it's just me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and the reason why I ask is because, uh, because obviously you're aware of the whole, um, the whole strike going on. It's <clears> what, <throat> six months now. Yeah, it's going on way too long, actually. And uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, like I've been so like frustrated with the whole thing. I've almost kind of checked out for the last couple of months of just 
like throwing the throwing the hope up is going to get figured out. I know that sounds terrible, but it's just been such a frustrating experience. It feels like every couple of years we have another frustrating experience like that. So I, I'm like sort of hoping that SAG figures it out, that, you know, everybody gets it all figured out soon because so many of my friends are actors and they are depending on this. OK. Now, has it affected you um, in any way? No, not really. Like I said, I, I'm I work independently. So my jobs come to me, you know, I'm not with a company or anything um, and I'm not acting. So that's not going to affect me. The fact that there aren't as many movies coming, um, obviously, with like the writer strike and that kind of thing. Uh, no, not terribly, just because of the fact that, you know, I do commercials, things like that. Things aren't really scripted. Um, I know it has had a huge impact on the people that do work in my field in casting because if there's no movies, there's nothing to cast if there's right. no television shows. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to kind of be doing smaller stuff that's not really falling on that scripted stuff right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um so so you're so you're actually the first guest who who actually works in casting. So I do have a few um a few questions that I want to um ask you if that's okay. okay. Um so so my understanding of casting is um, is it, typically whenever there's a project in the pipeline. My understanding is that the producers will you know will let the casting people know what they're looking for, and then the and then sometimes the producers will be present, but it's mostly the casting agent who kind of acts as the eyes and ears of the of the production team, so to speak, to find the right person. Is that an accurate statement, or am yeah. I far left field? No, 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 that's about right. Um, we work with not just the producers, but the director and kind of try to all work hand in hand with the vision that is there for the film, you know, depending on whose vision it is, it could be strictly the directors and he's getting a lot of creative leeway or the producers, but just sort of working hand in hand to see what they see and try to find the right people to make that happen. Gotcha. So can you walk me through the process of, of what it's like when you're um, looking for the right person to cast? Um, so what, what we do, um, is we put out what's called a casting notice and we send that to our talent agents mm -hmm. and then they go through their talent and it might, it might be, I need a Caucasian male, 60 to 70 silver hair, um, who knows how to ride a tricycle. I, you know, I don't know. You, you right. make it up <laughs> and they, and they go and they find all the people that they have in their agency that fit that. And they send those people. And we'll look through them and if they, you know, if it's someone that we're like, no, that doesn't really match what we're looking for, or it's close, but not, not quite. And sometimes there'll be no one and you'll have to put something out with more, you know, with a broader idea of what you're looking for. But when we get, you know, a handful of those people, we send them on to the director, whoever it is, is asking the producers and uh, let them take a look. And if they like those people, then we bring them in for an audition mm -hmm. and we have them come and read you know, the sides that are provided, which is just a piece of the script that that act, that that character would read. And um, from there, you know, working again, hand in hand with the director producers, we decide which one is best for the role. And, and then they get cast into that role. Um, yep. For extras casting, it's a little bit different. Um, it kind of just depends on the film. But say you have a film that's taking place at a high school. Well, obviously, you know, the stars, they're the ones that are being cast with auditions. Extras are they're in the background and, you know, sometimes they're called just background actors, but they're the people that you see in the film that you don't even realize that you're seeing, but the film would be incomplete without them. And then they just give us a broad idea of like, I need males and females 14 to 18 to be these high school students. And so you're just basically looking for anybody that looks like they'd be a high school student that can be a part of this background scene to, to, I guess, fill the movie with authenticity. Right. Sort of like create the ambiance of, of, of a scene, right? Right. Yeah. And I, and I don't know, like, I don't have a good example for you, but I know there's been times that I've watched films and been like, why is the cafeteria empty or why does it look off? And maybe that's just because I know like what I'm supposed to be looking for, but it's like your brain doesn't quite accept that there's just no one in this crowded arena. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> so, um, so 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 when you're casting for um for leads and, and and you're um and you're going through the talent is there like a magic number that you're looking for like you're looking for like 10 or 20 people to um you know possibly give to the directors and then they let you know hey i need you know if you can find five candidates you know to bring in and read for the part that'd be great is there anything yeah, is there anything like that it's usually there up to their discretion if they're like i need to see you know, 15 of these people because I don't think I'm going to have the right one. Then you bring in a lot, especially if it's very like specified. Um, 
but if it's just if it's just an older man who's going to be standing, you know, it, it just comes down to what the director is looking for. He may know in the first three people you send him, know that's the guy. But he may send us back five, ten times and say, you haven't found him yet. Keep going. Um, so it kind of just comes down to what they're thinking. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you, and, and you said you used to do acting. Does that um, has that given you like a unique perspective when it comes to casting? Because I'm sure it does. It, it definitely does. And it, it gives me um, a lot of sympathy, I guess, maybe empathy um, for them, because it it is very even with someone that's outgoing like I am. And it's not really necessarily afraid of rejection or whatever. It, it's hard. It's hard to put yourself to be vulnerable like that. And so I like to believe that it's given me a softer spot for those actors just knowing what they're doing and how hard it is to walk in there every time and do it over and over and, you know, just try to be exactly what someone's looking for. I mean, that that's hard in life, but it's mm -hmm. also very hard as a job, like to be exactly what someone is looking for. So it, it gives me, certainly gives me that perspective um, just on how hard they work and how much it matters, you know, to treat them with, with respect and understanding. Yeah. Cause I can, um, cause I, cause I've done some casting myself when I was a lot younger and, you know, and, and when I don't, when I didn't get the role, I'm like, man, these people just don't get it. They just don't understand how much I really, really want this. Uh -huh. I, mean, I, I, I mean, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever felt, you know, felt like, you know, I, I, I know what these people are going through, but I've got to, I have to, you know, be like this because I've got a job to do. Yeah. And that's even hard, you know, for the casting director, it's, it's difficult because you know that you're hurting somebody, you know, that you're kind of squashing their dream. And a lot of times they'll come in like that and they're like, I know I'm perfect for this role. And I mean, yeah, maybe, but the director didn't agree or you know, whoever didn't agree. And it's, it is kind of hard to, to be on that side of it and sort of dash that person's hopes. And so again, like I, I try to be very understanding. I try to be very kind, especially if you're saying, no, you didn't get the, you know, you didn't get the role. Um, and just hope that they know going into it, like, this is what it, you know, this is what it is. I might not get it kind of thing. Right. Right. So, um, so, so is there like a particular group or um, particular group of individuals or type of indiv individuals that you would say are the most difficult to cast? Ooh, that's a good question. I know, I know that's a pretty loaded question, but you know, honestly, a lot of times it is, um, men in their like middle age. And the reason I think for this, no one's ever said this is a lot of times those people have, and this is awful. I'm just going to sound like I'm a woman hater, but a lot of times those people are the breadwinners more often than not. Mm -hmm. And if they're not full-time actors, then this is their secondary job. And so while they really love acting, they might not have the capability of taking that time off to go be like say on a series or, you know, for, for a week of shooting, they might not have that capability. So a lot of times we run into, you know, I'd love to do that, but I don't have the, you know, the luxury of taking off this week from my actual job because they don't make, they don't act enough to make it a full-time job, unfortunately. And there are some that do, but, but that's what I think I run into the most. Yeah. And films, yeah. Yeah. And film shoots, they, they have like some of the toughest schedules out there. So I can, oh, I can yeah. really sympathize with that. Have you ever, have you ever like, you know, been on a film set as, you know, as a casting director or do they just tell you to just stick in your office and send us the talent you know when i was younger i loved being on the set i that was my like one of the top things i love to watch the actors do what they do and I, but as i've gotten older i've just kind of liked to just be in my office i do go to the set and i like to um well you know you want to meet the people that you're working with you don't want it to be strictly over a computer mm -hmm. um and just have the experience but i i think that it's really an exciting industry and it's, you know, a lot of people don't do it and so they don't know what's going on. And so I don't ever want to take for granted that, but after so many years of doing it, it's sort of like, yeah, <laughs> this is cool. But I would, and, and the hours, I mean, sometimes they're working, you know, 15 hours a day, sometimes well into the night. Um, so yeah, I mean, I still go, I, tr everything that I'm on, I try to make some kind of appearance there if possible, you know, especially if it's more than a day or so, but for the most part, I would rather be in my office. <laughs> right, right. Because it's less strenuous and you're not having people yelling at you, right? Yeah, and it's just so busy and it's just so, there's so much chaos. And a lot of times I end up being in the way more than I'm being helpful. Or I'll have to walk away and use my computer to cast for something the next day or schedule something the next day. So it ends up being not as helpful with me being there anyway, unless there's a purpose, you know, for some reason that I'm there. Um, yeah. But a lot of times it's just, it's so much easier just to be available by phone or computer and just do my work from where I'm comfortable. Gotcha. So, so, so did you start your, um, 
your your, your job as a casting director, uh, casting agent, like before or after the pandemic? Oh no, I've been doing this almost twenty years. Twenty years, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, so um, and th- this might sound like a dumb question. What what's the difference between you know casting you know prior to twenty twenty and what it is after? Oh gosh, so. <laughs> This is where I would not want to be an actor. Um, what had happened before is you, know, you could see your actors in person. And there is definitely, in my opinion, I'm just speaking from my own experience. Mm-hmm. There's a different, a different, I don't know, like chemistry, I guess I'm going to use that word, that you can have with an actor that is standing in front of you. And once the pandemic happened, everything was virtual. Everyone was sending in auditions. They were videoing them. And you could be the absolute best at videoing. But it wouldn't matter because you can't feel that chemistry. <clears throat> and I think that, that is such a just really stinks for the actors. It really does, because it, sometimes you can just really hit it off with a casting director. And they even if you don't get that role, they they feel it for you and you just don't get that through video. And that has been the hardest part, in my opinion. So as it you know, worked to, uh, you know, to a disadvantage for most of these actors, then do you think? I, I think it's been a huge disadvantage, it, particularly for the newer actors. Gotcha. You know, if you're if you're established and you know your casting directors and and a lot, you know it's a small industry out here, so a lot of us all know each other. Um, you you have an advantage there, but if you're a newer actor and you're trying to get on the scene, 2020 just they would it would have kicked their butt. Yeah, is that um is, is that still an ongoing process or have you like started moving back to the in person casting? Yeah, for the most part, people it, it's kind of comes down to the preference of of the casting director too. Like, do they want to deal with people coming in and that kind of thing? Cause to be honest, we've, I think as a country, well, as a world has gotten kind of lazy and it's been, there's an, a nice part of it. You know, you don't have to go get an office. You don't have to p- bring people in, you know, that part's been like, well, I mean, we could all do this. But again, just for me personally, I have tried getting back into the wanting to see the people. And I, and I believe there are several others that, that like that process of seeing and feeling that chemistry. Yeah, because then you because then you can kind of get the feeling of you know whether or not this person might be right, even if they're saying they are you know right for the role, you know. Right, and you can do a great audition. I'm not you know, I think that a lot of people do wonderful video auditions. I I just think it's really nice to like feel that that interaction as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, I, so I wanted to shift gears a little bit. So um, so I originally heard about you from from Bradley um with mm-hmm. the um independent picture house and he actually um he actually pointed pointed me in your direction and 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 i was and, and i started looking at uh, looking at the website just reading up about you guys but um but but can you tell me um but can you tell me in, in our audience a little bit about what you know how you got started and what you guys do with the carolina film community yeah absolutely so um in 2009 that's when we started and that was when our incentives for film had had gone away And at that point, there was just nothing. We weren't making, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's even two films a year that North Carolina was doing that that were big budget films. And it was really hurting our industry, obviously. People were having to move away because we couldn't work here. And there was such a frustration. Yeah, there were independent films being made, but on a large scale, we weren't getting any work. And it was, there was such frustration in that. And so the big thing was like, well, if people aren't going to, if they're not going to bring film here and help us here, we'll just create something and we'll start putting together a community that will make their own films and we'll get films out. And while they're still not big budget films, the whole idea was just like to keep creative juices flowing because we believed that something better was coming. And uh, so that that's what we did. We had our first meeting in 2009 and uh, we had about 150 people came. And it was just, there was such a hunger for it that it just took off. It just the idea of wanting to be together and have this collective mindset of creating film. And um, yeah, I just, and about that time, our incentives did actually start to change back over. And so we are, <laughs> we ended up getting films, which is amazing because now we have this huge community that we could share information with. So it's like, hey, this film's coming. If you're an actor, this is, this is happening. If you're, um, you know, whatever, if you work in crafty, this is happening. And so it was like this wealth of information that th- this community was sharing. And so, uh, so basically you guys were like a network, you know, let, letting each other know, you know, when, when, yeah. where the next, next job is, right? Yeah. So we, we had like a whole, a whole networking side of it. We were educating every month. We were having speakers come in that were educating the group on different things. You know, they might have like a producer from the latest film might come in or 
or um you know anybody that can come and talk like i mean casting directors we've had them come in and talk to the actors about how to give a great audition i mean things like that so we were also educating and then on top of that we started our own in-house film contest that was called made in well at the time it was made in charlotte but as we grew we started calling it made in carolinas um so so it was also kind of forcing these people hey if you're not going to do it on your own we're going to kind of force you into being creative and have this you know friendly competition against each other so your friends are doing this and now let's all do it together and um it just really took off it really grew um yeah i mean so i i can't say enough like i hate to i'm bragging a little but i can't say enough good things about the way the community kind of came together even so much as like like taking care of one another too you know that there was uh, a death in a family you know people rallied together and they took care of that person if a baby was born people rallied together it ended up being it ended up being an alternative really to a to church in the south you know in the south that's what your church does but if mm -hmm. you're not a churchgoer and many people aren't uh, myself included that this is a place for you to find community that was going to not just be a place you could find a job but a place you could find a place so 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 it ended up becoming you know a huge family as it were it, it did and and i mean i think that we still we still even have that and that's probably the thing i'm most proud of is if something bad happens you know a lot of people want to hear the bad news but when it bad happens it's not that we're just sharing this bad news like we're jumping in we're taking care of each other and example after example but even just the good stuff you know watching these some of these kids that started back in the you know 2009 2010 who are in college and stuff now are graduating college now and it's like oh my goodness like you know just watching these wonderful things happen it was and it is kind of like a family yeah yeah because i mean because I mean, I mean, because i hear so many stories about how you know people who, who take part in productions they grow close together and, and mm -hmm. soon they're like a, a huge family so that's pretty heartwarming to hear um so so in regards to the community um so, so like you said that it, it, it's it's a huge network where you know where you guys are passing information along to each other um about about you know the next production and what they're looking for and who they're looking for um are the people in the film community are are, are they mostly film professionals the people who've worked in the industry <clears throat> so i think we have a, a really big mixed bag i would say at the very beginning it was mostly actors and some of those were mostly background actors looking to help you know hopefully get bigger stuff Right. Um, progressively through the years, we've had such a mix of it that we've had industry professionals, you know, the top people that are not only working in the field doing stuff, but also making their own films, um, all the way back down to, you know, budding actors as, as kids. So I would say now it goes across the board. And I, I like to say this is the place that it, there's a spot for everybody. And I don't know if I'm, you know, just being honest, like the people that are the industry professionals, they come, but I think they are the ones that are coming to to be the knowledge, to be the help, to, you know, because they're not going to probably get as much out of the group uh, other than the speaker. You know, you might want to make a connection there. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm so grateful because a lot of those that come, they're there to help build the community and they're they're giving of themselves. You know, they're giving information. They're helping people find their place. And a lot of new people are coming in and that's been so helpful to them, you know, to have that connection to people that are professionals. So, um, so, so can can you kind of describe to me the, the the type of people um, who are in the community? Because I know you mentioned actors, but are we talking like makeup artists or filmmakers or cinematographers or lighting yeah. people? All of that, yeah. Um, again, there are the actors, and I would say probably half the people are, are actors, which makes sense. You need about half actors on a film, right? Um, and then we do we have we have directors, we have um, still photography, cinematography, a few makeup artists that are regular um, attendees. Um, I'm, yeah, I mean, pr other producers that come, a lot of screenwriters. We, at one point we had, before the pandemic, we had an independent screenwriting group that was like a sister group of this um, that, that worked through us. So, I mean, just any, like, I can't think of any part of it that isn't, there isn't some representation in, you know, in the community. Gotcha. So, so if someone were to say, "Hey, I need um, I need a gaffer," most likely, you know, you can point me to a gaffer or two, right? I can point you to a gaffer, or I could point you to someone that can point you to a gaffer. Um, and that's you know, like that would be the the industry professionals. They would either be that, or they'd be the one that says, "Oh, I work with Joe over here, and that's what he does. Let me let me put you in contact with him." So a lot of times, even if that person's not standing there in the room that night, somebody has that contact to help you. 
So do you guys like meet on a on a regular like on a weekly basis or or monthly or so we how, met, do you, how do you all like stay connected? We met monthly um, up until this last year, and this last year we tried something a little different with doing quarterly. I don't know if I'm totally sold out to it. Where I've been talking to my board about what we're going to do for 2024. It had perks and it had downsides, but up until last year we met every month um, regularly. Gotcha. And, and, and you guys just meet up and just chat about, you know, about what's going on in the industry and everything, right? Well, we all meet up, but, you know, we have the speaker, um, you know, whoever the speaker is for that night. And they they give their, you know, their presentation. They take questions. They answer questions. We also give a chance for local filmmakers to show some of their work. So if somebody's just made a short film that they want to put in a festival, they can show it. They can also take questions and answers. Or, or, yeah, that kind of, you know, just trying to give people an opportunity to interact and and also just learn about stuff while they're there. And then of course you're all there in the room. So it, you can meet people and network and things like that as well. So, so, so if a filmmaker like showed their film over there, this, they would do it like before they, they submitted it to a film festival, right? So well, like depending on the critiqued. festival, if okay. the festival lets you, I mean, there's all kinds of rules around that, but. Okay. Gotcha. So, so are y'all like spread out like across the Carolinas or are you mostly concentrated like, one particular state we are we are concentrated in charlotte um you know we've tried several times to try to branch out and it hasn't ever quite taken off um sort of halfway and then it, it it charlotte's been the only one that has just really steadily stayed so we have people come in for, from columbia and you know close like well obviously rock hill and stuff um mm -hmm. that are really close to the border and then mostly like charlotte and all the surrounding areas of charlotte as well uh so so how come it's ever worked with you know places like say greensboro or raleigh or chapel hill i, mean, I don't know i mean I, I wish i had a better answer than that it's just you know sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't and it just didn't hit <laughs> we tried gotcha. it in wilmington and we tried in the triad area and it just didn't it just didn't have the same pizzazz a lot of times like with triad it was so close that they're like we'll just drive to charlotte because we were we're close enough in proximity that we kind of work on the same stuff and then Wilmington, you know, they have their own their own little film world there, and I just don't know that they were they were ready for us yet. Yeah, they're on the they're, yeah they're doing their own thing in Wilmington. It's like yeah. there's there's Wilmington and there's the rest of North Carolina. With right. Those guys. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I used to I, I I used to do an internship with the Charlotte Film Commission um, back in the early early 2010s. Do you do you guys work with them or do you have any contact with these guys? And you were with the Charlotte Film Commission. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so Beth is a friend of mine and uh, she'll come and speak for us and she is very helpful. Like people need locations. She's always, you know, very open door policy with her. So, yeah, they they are great with just helping us um, with anything, actually. I mean, any questions I've had, they've been very helpful with that and just um, always open to being available to help any filmmakers and that kind of thing. And what about the. Um what, what, what about uh, the schools in the area? Like, because I know UNCC's got like a, it's, it's got like a, a separate like college or school devoted to the arts. Do you do you yeah. work with these guys also? Um, we don't work directly with them, no. But the people that do, you know, like the teachers, professors, people like that, they are involved. Some of them, not all of them, are involved. And the same thing, you know, just very helpful. We've had them come as speakers before. They attend some of the meetings. So we all try to keep you know, those doors open so that we can all, again, share information, help one another out, keep the community open, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, so, I, I, so this does lead me into my next question about the, about the film scene in Charlotte, because you did mention, um, I think it was like 08 or 09. We, um, we lost the film incentives. Can you, can you, can you tell me, and, and I'm going to sound dumb for saying this, but can you tell me what the film scene in Charlotte is like these days? Like, is it thriving? Or is it kind of, you know, so-so? Well, you know, our incentives changed. Um, when we had you know, the, the rebate, it was a little bit, it was better. Um, so it's changed some, but I would say we, we get a little bit of a, an up and down. And that's, again, like, I'm, I'm saying it like how I feel like it works. And that's probably not completely fair because I don't have the numbers in front of me, of course. But, um, I feel like we have a really busy season and we'll have like a lot of stuff happening and then it may just kind of, you know, wane for a little bit and then it'll come back. But I don't feel, I, I think that everybody, not including when we're on a strike, it feels like everybody stays pretty busy, you know, pretty steadily working. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so I think that's really the like one of the best things we can ask for. I, I think everybody would love to be overly busy and turning down work. Um, but, you know, if we could keep our industry employed and I think that we are again without the strengths, typically we are doing that. And so we're having a a film scene that is alive and vibrant. It, in my opinion, could be doing more, but it's not dead and it's not dying. All right. So, so the film, so the film scene at the moment is, it's not dead, but it's not lively either. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. I mean, I would like, I mean, I, like, I don't know if I'm saying it, but like, I would say we're on the closer end to lively, but we're not as alive as we used to be. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like with the Charlotte music scene too. Cause, um, yeah. cause, um, you know, because I went to school at UNC Greensboro and there were like bands playing everywhere. And you come here to Charlotte, there's like, it's like crickets. It's like, where the hell is everybody? Mm, yeah. So like, because, because, um, and, and, and I'm sure you can, you can remember this too. I remember back in, you know, back in the nineties, there were like all these film production, film productions going on in Charlotte. You, I mean, you remember Shallow Hal. Oh um, yeah. You know, they, they, they shot that. Um, I remember they shot that at the, um, at the Siski estate in South Park. And then, they did shake rattle and roll that um that tv movie they filmed it in my in my you know my old neighborhood um oh, wow. in sedgefield but you know but i kind of i kind of feel like i kind of feel like nowadays because i think i i think that i think that whole debacle uh, under under Go governor mccrory kind of you know kind of yeah. took us down you know a hard you know a hard path and we've never really recovered from it and well, I and feel then we like, the <laughs> yeah, true. Well, well, even before the pandemic, it, it, it felt like things were drying up because I think the only major production that was shot in North Carolina in general was Iron Man three. And yes, that was pretty much it because, because ever since then, and, 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 and I, and I told people this, you know, whenever we talk about film production, in North Carolina, you know, in, you know, we've got to do something to, to, to steal, you know, to steal Atlanta's thunder because, Stuff that they're they're doing down there that could have been us, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Oh, absolutely. that could have been us. <laughs> absolutely, there is there is a lot of bitterness on this end from that, for sure. Um, yeah, and you're right. Like when McCory came, that did change our incentives. You know, they let it sunset, and that that was where everybody started getting really freaked out because it was like, oh my gosh, we can't. Like we're making so much money right now with with film. What do we do? And and it did dry up, and it was scary. Like for a while, I mean, people were just very hungry, and they were going to Atlanta. Huh. Uh, to work. I mean, Atlanta was like poaching us too. They're like offering to like pay your taxes for you to move or something. They were trying very hard to get more That's people because right. they were getting so much work. That's right. Because I um because I went to school. I, I actually majored in film production at UNC Greensboro, and a lot of my friends just up and left. Um, 2010, 2011. They just either went out west or went to mm -hmm. Atlanta, and that, and and that really broke my heart because I'm like you know everybody's been touting about Wilmington for years and years. Oh, yeah. What the hell happened here? You know? Yeah. And it definitely was. I mean, when, when that dried up, it, it became, I mean, it was, it was bad. And then, you know, when we got, got them back, that was great. You know, we had a really great period of time and now we work on a grant program, which is, is good. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, we're just not getting as much work as we got, you know, when we had the rebate. Um, and, and Atlanta is still working on a rebate system. So they are definitely getting more work. So um so so I do want to ask you um about the incentives um can 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 you tell us a little bit about what uh, uh, about what North Carolina's film incentives are if if you can speak to that um I can try I'm not gonna uh, I'm gonna try to just high level it because I won't try to get in the weeds but essentially what we have now is a grant program where people they're applying to get you know a, an amount of money that we have set aside. Okay. Um, there's different rules and things that go into that, what you, what kind you can submit for, you know, what you can't submit for, things like that. Um, but there's only a set amount of money that is there. And once that money is gone, that's, that's it. So, um, so, so, so are grants like typical or atypical when it comes to incentive programs? You know, I don't actually know that. Um, I know that we were not previously on that in Atlanta, or not Atlanta, but in Georgia in general, they're also not, they, they rebate, which is in my opinion, better. Um, South Carolina might be on a grant program now. I'm, I'm not sure. That's a great question. I should find that out. I don't know how typical they are. Okay, gotcha. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, that, that, that's that's totally fine. Just because I remember, I, I remember someone telling me about that years and years ago, and uh, and man, I really, really, you know, need to read up more on this because I figured whatever whatever we've we've got going on with our incentive program right now, it's it's not enough. We're basically half-assing it. That's 
And I, and I, yeah, I think that, and we fought hard. We fought really hard to keep the, the previous incentives. Um, but it just comes down to, you know, what they, you know, what the governor and his team and the state decide on. But I mean, it's much more complicated in my opinion now, the submitting for the grant having to be approved and exactly what you need it for versus the rebate where it's like, if you bring a movie here, you get 25% back. It's yeah. A lot easier that way. And I certainly wish we would you know jump back into that for sure. So, um, so have y'all been like been active or, or, or been trying to, you know, lobby, you know, the governor to try to do something about the incentive programs to kind of, you know, you know, invite more work in, into the Carolina area? So we are a nonprofit organization. We're a 501c3. So we can't really go and lobby um, okay. per se, but we have up to what we can do. Like we've, um, we had a letter writing campaign. We've gone to the Capitol, you know, when they've had events there to try to do, you know, what we can to speak to the governor, to speak to the house, things like that. Um, so inside of what we can do, we have done that. Uh, and more than that, I think the most important thing that we provide is, is the fact that we're building stuff here an infrastructure so that should we you know, make a move where we're, we're getting more film, there's an infrastructure here that can support it. Gotcha. So what would be the best advice then to try to, to try to get the governor's office to, you know, of course the train a little bit, if you had ben, any advice. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, to me, it, it just makes so much sense. Um, you know, it's like, and I, I use this example, I had a, a speak in front of a group one time and I use the example of just if Harris Teeter has milk for $3 and Publix has milk for $3, but Publix will give me back 25%. I'm going to Publix. Right. <laughs> um, it just felt very easy and very simple. And I guess, you know, they weren't, they weren't seeing that the same way, obviously. They overthought it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah God bless, God bless the governor's <laughs> office. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is not my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, but, um, but we're, um, we're, we're getting close to the end here, but, um, but Julie, before, um, before we go, uh, if, if people are more interested in, in, in your work and what you do, or, or if they just want to um, reach out to you or connect with you, how can they do that? Um, if they want to find me personally, I mean, you can find me, uh, you know, all over the place. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all that. But if they want to uh, find Carolina Film Community, um, you, we have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a Twitter page, and our website, which is carolinafilmcommunity.com. Gotcha. And and do they have to be actors or or crew people to be members or can anybody oh, join? No. Yeah, I think I, I encourage people, even if you're not involved in the industry, but you're just interested or supportive or whatever. I mean, I encourage people to come. Um, our next meeting is December the 5th. And our guest speaker is Darby Camp, um, who is a, um, well, she's a teenager now. It's hard to believe, but she's been a child actor for some time. She was the star of the film that came out, Clifford. Um, she's been in, and I will not remember this now that I'm trying to remember it, but a, a Christmas movie with, um, geez, why can't I? Goldie Hawn's husband that I can't leave, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Um, I'm like, duh. Uh, no, she's a wonderful actress. She has a wonderful family and she's agreed to come and talk to us just to see what it's about, like what it's like to be a child actor and grow into being a teenager actor and just what her life is like. So I'm excited for that. I think that especially child actors will get a lot out of that and their parents, you know, just knowing what it's like. But mm -hmm. anybody, I mean, if you just want to support, be supportive or, or if you're just interested in what it's like to be a child actor or you just like Darby and her career, you know, I encourage anybody to come and just experience that and kind of learn about that excellent and and and, and i'll have them down in the um, description below so people can check that out awesome. um but before we end um julie this is, this is the question that i ask all all of my guests um is there a particular movie or tv show that you're that you've seen recently that you're just excited to talk about that you're just bursting it seems to just cross the ties <laughs> oh my gosh um there are no wrong answers, by the way. No, so much pressure. Uh, you know, people ask me, they're like, oh, you love movies, so what's your favorite movie? And I'll be honest, I've never had a favorite movie, except maybe, like, when I was younger, I loved The Princess Bride. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I think it's a perfect movie. Yeah? But, um, you know, what? I, it, my friends will call me a liar if I don't say this, but The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix is um i don't typically watch things more than once uh, i don't right. i don't need to like I, I enjoy them and i move on i'm just one of those people but i have watched this show beginning to end probably four times i think it is one of the most brilliant and clever things that i've ever watched uh i like horror stuff anyway um but i want it to be 
scary, not gross. And, and this hits all of that. And I just think it's like, even after having watched it, I was just like, you know, hungrily looking up stuff about it and Reddit stuff and, and uh, just the explanations behind it, how deep the characters were, just all of it. I, if I had to just you know, sing praises of anything, it would be that. Yeah. And I, and I had a guest on a few weeks ago. He, um, he runs a, um, he runs a theater company out of Concord. He's doing a production in December. That's, that's based on the turn of the screw, which was the inspiration Ooh. for that show. Um, oh, on no, this one was Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of um, Hill House, okay. Yeah, the turn of the screw was the Bly Manor, which was the second season. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. the same person, same show, but second. Season. Yeah, yeah. So that 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 creepy psychological horror yeah, vibe I mean, to it's it. It's just so good, <laughs> and I I don't know. It's just phenomenal. I really enjoy it. He's got I think four now, four different shows. And they started with that one and they did Midnight Mass and they just came out with the fall of the House of Usher that just got released last month. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the modern adaptation of the Poe story, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also very good. It's just it, just very, very well made. I, I don't I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, because I, yeah, I saw the trailer and I was a bit apprehensive, but, you know, but I haven't given it a fair shake. So I, I am going to I'm going to sit down and watch it at some point. Do you like haunted like haunting stuff and oh I, I mean julie me and my my friend and i we did a five episode special on our top five horror my choices were unconventional uh-oh i, uh -oh, mean, I want it, now i want to hear i mean I, I i mean my number spoilers by the way my number one choice was shutter island oh <laughs> love shutter island love it love the book more but love the movie and, and 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 the reason why is because there are just so many twists and turns. But plus, mm -hmm. it was very it, it has such a gothic atmosphere too, and mm -hmm. I and I absolutely love that. Um, and 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 and, and, and especially especially being on an island where there's no way to get off, and yeah. there's like a storm and there's like this huge mystery. It's like, oh, please, can I have some more, sir? <laughs> My gosh, I think you'll love Haunting of Hill House then. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean that. I mean that. I have. I mean, I've. I've so much on my to do to um to watch <laughs> list. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's just running this podcast. You know, it just takes up so much. I, well, that, that, well, that my regular understand. job. You know. <laughs> yeah, I fully understand that. No, but, just um, take a week vacation and and binge it. Well, I well, my birthday is coming up at at the end of this month, so I am planning on uh, blocking out some time to just you know screw around. So that 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 may be a good opportunity um but julie I, I can't thank you enough for for taking the time to be on this podcast and then i definitely do um i do plan on having you uh, return for future episodes so just let me know how things are going if, if there's like a particular event that comes up please let me know so i can i can bring you back on oh i would love to thanks for having me absolutely and i just want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this episode remember to like comment subscribe and let me know what your thoughts are on the film scene in north carolina or in the state that you live in and please share this video we are looking to grow our audience and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one ciao